Hello guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Running up the latest Chelsea news on a regular basis. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe on this Tuesday. Got my Porto preview. Massive Champions League tie the first leg tomorrow night. Going to have my preview out later today. So make sure you don't miss that later. But also in today's episode, focusing on Tammy Abraham. Matt Law wrote a really in-depth piece around the future of Tammy Abraham. It's been a big discussion point, not only this week uh, as we're early into the week in terms of Tammy's future, but also in recent months. Uh, we've been discussing Tammy Abraham, where he sits at Chelsea, the future, given how Chelsea are likely to go out and spend big on another striker in the summer. Should Tammy Abraham be given more of a chance on the Thomas Tuchel uh, currently with the attack continuing to struggle? We'll get into that today and more. Before we get into any of that stuff, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads surrounding Chelsea on the channel. Also hit that like button because it helps out the channel as well. I also want to say a massive thank you to Lucid FC for sponsoring Let's Talk Chelsea in 2021, powering the show. Great guys, Chelsea fans as well. So they'll be hoping for a massive win tomorrow against Paul. So we're going to have some cool giveaways from Lucid FC on the channel in the coming weeks and months so make sure you stay tuned for that and thank you Lucid FC for sponsoring Let's Talk Chelsea in 2021. But let's get into the situation surrounding Tammy Abraham. It's sort of risen to the surface again this debate point um i remember it a few weeks back i'm making videos surrounding tammy abraham's future and where he sits you know will he still be here next season the idea of getting a new striker in the summer and what does that mean for tammy abraham and sort of the discussion of tammy's future at chelsea and you know is he good enough to be at chelsea and all that stuff that's been debating in recent weeks uh, predominantly online and on twitter and i sort of wanted to bring it up in a video because matt law wrote this really in-depth piece yesterday going into tammy abraham the curious case of tammy abraham why is it gone wrong for Chelsea's top goal scorer. It goes into his hopes for England in the summer, being involved in that Euro squad, which now looks unlikely. Of course, that injury to his ankle ruled him out of the international break. And you do feel for several players, if they're not involved in that international break, they may uh, limit their chances of being involved in the summer. So that's a, a big thing. And whilst he's not playing for Chelsea, which he hasn't been even when fit, more concerns surrounding his sort of England involvement in the summer will come up. And, and that's certainly a case that, that should be of concern for Tammy Abraham. But Matt Law goes into predominantly his Chelsea career and says it is strange and an almost unique situation for a striker who remains Chelsea's leading goal scorer and it is understandable why some of his teammates as well as Abraham himself are confused by his exclusions on a Thomas Tuchel. Not only has Abraham scored 12 goals for Chelsea this season in his 30 appearances, he has also registered four assists. Chelsea have not scored twice in open play in the Premier League without him in the team since the 3-3 draw of Southampton in October when Abraham went on as an 8 89th minute substitute. As reported by Telegraph Sport, the vultures at home and abroad are already circling over Chelsea with the club yet to start negotiations over a new contract for Abraham, whose present deal will only have two years remaining on it at the end of the season. I think there's there's so much to get into in terms of Tammy Abraham. Um, my point of defence for Tammy has been look at his stats for such a young player, for such a young striker. The point I've always brought up is not an anomaly player. You know, not someone like Erling Haaland, who Chelsea could be getting in the summer, could be going in for not an anomaly talent that's freakishly good at his age I'm talking about the norm the norm for a player of his age scoring goals in the Premier League when he hasn't always been the guaranteed first choice in particular this season and this is not about hurling abuse or you know really trying to single out a player I think it's just looking at the facts and you know when Chelsea bought Timo Werner last summer there was an expectation that he was going to be Chelsea's main striker or at least the main source of goals that's why we brought him in the fact that he hasn't and the fact that Tammy Abraham has not started a game for Chelsea since the 20th of February against Southampton and he's still Chelsea's top goal scorer. Timo Werner is the third top goal scorer playing 10 more games to Tammy Abraham this season. Timo is third with 10 goals. His last coming against Newcastle on the 15th of February. So that was before the last game before Tammy Abraham's last start on the Thomas Tuchel for Chelsea away to Southampton. And this stat here by FB Ref sort of uh, goes into detail of goal scoring in the Premier League 1920 and the 2021 season by forwards combining them both. And uh, looking at Tammy Abraham how he, sh he shapes up and he shapes up very impressively when you look at that graph there in terms of Gabriel Jesus uh, Jamie Vardy uh, on the left there goals per 90 a uh, non-penalty xg per 90 that's something I've gone into on the channel before when you look at the fact he his goal rate um, compared to other strikers when you take out penalties penalties of course matter but Tammy Abraham doesn't really take penalties for Chelsea I don't think he ever has apart from say the penalty shootout against Liverpool in the Super Cup a few in pre-season when uh, Frank Lampard first arrived that's never been sort of 
of his responsibility when he's been on the pitch. So that makes it even more impressive given his age, given how he could develop over his career. Another thing here from expected Chelsea, which I think is really puts Abraham in a good light given where he is, his development at such a young age for a striker. At a big club like Chelsea, career goal contributions by current under-23 strikers. Tammy Abraham matched with Erling Haaland with 107. Uh, you see on there, Lotaro Martinez, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's had a really good season for Everton. Luka Jovic, even Joao Felix on that list as well. Uh, he just ends the tweet by saying people often underrate just how special Tammy Abraham is as a goal scorer. And this has always been my sort of underlying point of Tammy Abraham. Um, the way people speak about him, the way people disregard his talent or disregard what he's given to Chelsea is people speak like we've got guaranteed goals in this team above Tammy Abraham. And that's always been the absurd thing when we have the discussion about Tammy Abraham. If Chelsea currently had Timo Werner performing like what we expected Timo would do, or at least a lot better than he currently is, and he was Chelsea's top goal scorer, he was getting close to 20 goals a season, and uh, you know Chelsea wanted to go out and sign another striker on top of that, then I think more sort of weight would be given to the argument of Tammy Abraham still having the same numbers. The problem with Chelsea currently in attack is we don't have a lot of goals within this team. We don't have a guaranteed goal scorer. Someone that you, you put your money on week in, week out is going to get us those goals like Didier and Diego used to. Um, Olivier Giroud is not featuring that much and currently on a talk he doesn't look that sort of settled within the system Tammy's barely getting any, any opportunities and I do think it's a fair point to bring up that players like Timo Werner get bundles of opportunities under Thomas Tuchel um, and I, this is not against Timo but I think it's just fair to point out that Timo Werner can go many games without scoring many games playing poorly and he doesn't get hooked off at half time you know Tammy Abraham got hooked off half time against Southampton I'm not sure if that had something to do with his fitness and injury because you know after that Southampton game we started to see the the injury problems from that ankle but at the same time I think you could point out Callum Martin-Odoi too the treatment of say someone who's young like Tammy Abraham who's probably one of the best value players for Chelsea in this squad in terms of what the club are actually paying Tammy Abraham and given where he could go to in his career. That's always been the most staggering thing about Tammy Abraham, the criticism and the disregard for him. When you just look objectively at the squad, you know, if the, the and I hate this term because it absolutely means nothing on social media, these buzzwords that really have no meaning to them. But if your argument is, and it's a lazy, you know, it's a very easy argument that people make is that Tammy Abraham is not Chelsea standard, whatever that means. Well, if he hasn't started a game since the 20th of February, he's still Chelsea's top goal scorer and the likes of Timo Werner and others are behind him. What does that say about the likes of Werner, Havertz and all those other players who should be doing better than Tammy Abraham or who many people believe are better than Tammy Abraham in terms of goal scoring? It doesn't reflect well upon them. It makes actually Tammy look a lot better and look, look like a player that Chelsea should be relying on a lot more. I do concern that if we let Tammy Abraham go, and, and I actually think he should be leaving, actually. You know, if he continues to be isolated, if he continues to be excluded from squads and Chelsea continue to falter in front of goal, I can't blame Tammy Abraham for his career, for his own career, such a young player, to turn around and go, well, I've done all I can at Chelsea. When I actually look at my numbers compared to other top strikers, what I've done at Chelsea over a short period of time, I can be happy with what I've done and he can go somewhere else. There'll be lots of clubs trying to sign Tammy Abraham given how young he is, given what he's already done compared to other strikers of a similar age who are not the ridiculous, you know, the, the ridiculous stats of, say, Kylian Mbappe or especially Erling Haaland. And maybe think that they can uh, get him in for a, for a decent fee and he can turn into a brilliant striker for them. I think Leicester, you know, Brendan Rodgers' name checked at Tammy Abraham recently. They could be looking for a striker in the summer. I think that'd be a great place for Tammy Abraham to go. And, you know, it's sad for me to think that Tammy Abraham could be leaving Chelsea. I'd love to see him stay and succeed. It's wonderful seeing young players succeed at Chelsea. It's been one of the great things over the two recent seasons. I just think Tammy more and more, it seems like Tuchel doesn't fancy him. And that's fair enough, you know, that's Tuchel's decision and he's got a lot of decisions right. But I think in the attack, there's such a big question mark over that for the long term. You know, Chelsea will likely go out and spend big in the summer. And if that rectifies the problem, if Timo Werner comes into form next season, then yeah, you could turn around and go, okay, we fixed the problem. But if it doesn't, and in five years time, we, you know, we, we regret saying Tammy Abraham, then I'm going look to at, look at the club and I'm going to think, and I'm also going to look at the current situation and go, well, we let another talented striker go there. And I think that Tammy could have a brilliant career. 
I think my problem has always been, and my argument around Tammy Abraham has never been that he's going to be a guaranteed world-class forward. My point has always been, look at the numbers, look at the stats, look at what he's had at Chelsea, look at what has been expected of him for such a young striker to come into Chelsea, being our top goal scorer last season, scoring quite a few goals this season, despite not always being the guaranteed first starter when we spent so much on Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, you know, more experienced forwards like Olivier Giroud. There's a change in management as well, and he hasn't started games regularly under Thomas Tuchel. I think when you add all of that up, you know, in terms of where he is currently in his career with regular forwards, I think it's really impressive. And I just think that Chelsea could be letting a very talented forward go. I think letting goals like that just walk out the door when Chelsea haven't had a regular goal scorer up top, I think is a silly move if you can't get a replacement. If you can get a replacement, then it's a different story. Um, but I, I just think generally when we speak about Tammy Abraham, I think if just look at stats, look at facts. And I think that there have been also arguments about the fact that he looks all awkward or you know aesthetic reasons I'm not really bothered about that because I, I care more about what people actually do on the pitch their end product and end product is it you know Tammy Abraham's pretty impressive compared to other Chelsea forwards in this squad and I think that that's that's more relevant to me you know whether you think he looks awkward when he's holding up the ball I think it's a bit irrelevant what, what does he actually do with the ball you know players can look actually quite uh, nice on the ball but they don't do anything with it and I'd prefer Tammy Abraham to other players who don't have end product personally um, so that's why Tammy Abraham I do back him and I think that it'd be a shame to let him go but for his own personal career a bit like for Kyle Tamori and other young players if it means them going elsewhere Chelsea can get a really decent fee for him and then reinvest smartly into the squad then that's probably the best case scenario as I said on added time yesterday you know if we could do a swap deal for, potentially for Declan Rice win-win situation for me so overall I think Tammy Abraham I think will have a good career as a striker whether that's at Chelsea or not um, and I just think as well the culture of Chelsea is just it isn't about, you know, giving strikers or especially at his um, position in the pitch, you know, in terms of Chelsea want ready-made forwards, they want ready-made players. And unfortunately for Tammy Abraham, someone who's still developing, still got parts of his game that he has to develop and may not be the finished article to about 26, 27. Chelsea are quite clearly not a club ready to, to give time for Tammy Abraham. And he could probably go somewhere else and have that time and have that patience and backing on the regular basis at say Leicester or West Ham. And I think he could thrive even more. That's just a sad state of, of the reality of Chelsea Football Club. That's what it is. Let me know your opinions on Tammy Abraham. Matt Law's article, please go and read it in the description box below all of that good stuff let me know in the comments below but that is it for this edition of let's talk chelsea thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload follow me on twitter at son of chelsea and i'll see you again